Hey guys, Becky Timms here live for The Drive at Five, and today I want to speak with you about how to evaluate the market viability for your product. So a lot of times um, people come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, Becky, I don't know what to sell, I don't know what to sell, so how can I find a product that I can do? So get, basically, the market viability is the potential that you will be able to continue to sell on Amazon and scale and make a profit, right? Because ultimately, we want to scale our product and we always want to make produce a profit if we can. So a few things that you can do, um, of course, like big corporations, they do things like focus groups and test markets. But when we're just testing a product, um, yes, we can test, do a, a small quantity to test the market. But an, a few questions that we need to ask ourselves are, you know, like, is, it, is this a practical product? Will it help someone solve a problem or a pain point? Is it something that people are passionate about? And these are the types of questions that we need to think. And then we have to have enough foresight to say, you know, are there any obstacles that lie ahead in this product? So, for example, if you're selling a toy for a child under the age of, let's say, 12, then you're going to need a CPCC certificate. And if you don't have your manufacturer provide one, you'll have to go through extra testing to have that product receive the CPCC certificate. So these are some things that you need to know. And then what if you need service? Like what if you have a product and it needs some type of customer service or support services that will really wow your customers and give them amazing customer service? And so these are the a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. So I've, I think I've come up with like five or six that I wanted to mention specifically today. Um, you want to choose a product that has the right size and the right weight. Now, a lot of trainings that you watch, they say, you know, make sure that it fits in a shoebox. Now, if everybody that's doing a training says, you know, make sure it fits in a shoebox, then if you, when, when others are zigging, you're zagging. So if you can make sure that yours is bigger than a shoebox, then your competition won't be as much as for the ones that are just finding products that fit in the shoebox. However, you will pay more, or you may pay more, for um, your shipping based on the size of your item. So these are some things that you really need to take um, into consideration, the size and weight of your product. Now, another thing that people do is, is your product fragile? A lot of trainings also say no glass, no glass, no glass, no glass, nothing that's breakable. Once again, if you're zigging, you need to be zagging when everybody else is zigging. Now, there's a ton of people that sell glass on Amazon, right? I mean, there's wine glasses and coffee mugs and this and this, but the, the issue is that it has to be properly packaged to be able to sell on Amazon. And so Amazon has like this three foot rule. So you package it up to send it into Amazon. And if you can drop it from three feet and it doesn't break, then your product is good. One uh, research or one article that I read said you should put your product in the dryer test. And I thought this was brilliant. So basically you box it up however you want to package it to send it to Amazon where you think it's so secure. And then you take that item and you put in the dryer, and then you put some books in there, and maybe some shoes, and some big bulky coats or something, and then you just tumble it around and around. And what that's going to do, that's gonna give you like the journey of a package in these FedEx trucks, and UPS trucks, and USPS trucks, because guys, all they do is knock and drop, knock and drop, and that's what they're doing. And so if your product can't uphold that fragility, then you may lose money. So just be careful if you're doing glass products. I'm not saying don't do them, but if you are going to do them, make sure that you properly package them because if not, you're going to have a lot of, or not you're going to, you may have a lot of returns when you're doing that. So another thing that you want to consider is, you know, what is the lifespan of your products? All products have lifespans. Now, if you've been following me for a while, I do consumables. I do things that are replenishable, and what my goal is is to build this brand, this custom, customer loyalty and brand where they fall in love with my products and they keep ordering them 
over and over and over again. And it's a great business model to follow because what you're doing is you're earning that customer trust and you're building your business or my business off of repeat sales. And so when you're doing something like that, you know, think of the grocery store model. It's like churn and burn, right? Inventory is high, competition is fierce, there's grocery stores all up and down the road. And I get asked all the time, well, Becky, you know, why would I buy this item on Amazon for X amount of dollars when I can go to Target and buy it? And my question is, well, why don't you go to Target? Because maybe you only shop at Walmart or maybe you only go to Kohl's and this particular item is at Target. And so these are some things, it's that brand and customer loyalty, but if you can have a product lifespan, something that is disposable and create that consumer trust, you will be golden. And that is exactly what I do. And I've done it from day one. I've always focused on the, um, the consumables, things that people use and they buy over and over and over again. So um, another thing that you can do is, you know, check for the viability of a product is a seasonality. You know, is it only going to sell during fourth quarter? Is it an Easter related product or Christmas related product or Memorial Day related product? Because yes, you will have high sales in those areas, but you'll have to store them you know, for like three or four years, or I'm sorry, three or four quarters before you can sell them again. And so you need to really count your storage cost in the um, cost of your your item so that you can actually, actually scale it when the time comes to scale it. Now, am I going to say never do a seasonal product? No way, because a lot of people make a ton of money, but just know the obstacle of these storage fees, these monthly fees, these long-term storage fees that you may um, encounter when you're when you're doing this. So another thing is always try to solve someone's pain point because if you can sell a product that does that, it's easier to sell a product that you know solves someone pain someone's pain point other than these luxury items because when you have luxury items, they um, they may be a harder sale. So that's what I wanted to share with you today to make sure that you have a viable product. And we talked about the size and the weight of the item. We talked about the fragility of the item. We talked about being a disposable or consumable item. We talked about it being a seasonal item. And the last point was make sure that your product solves a pain point for someone. So if you like these tips, I would love for you to connect with me on Make Money with Becky at gmail.com and I'll put you on my newsletter and show you exactly where I got these tips from. And if you're still watching me, I have a special treat for you because tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, I am going to actually show you how to find some of these products that then you can go forth and check the viability of the products. And so if you wanna do that, you can join me tomorrow night 8 p.m. Eastern at privatelabelcourse.com. I can't wait to see you over there. So it's actually 24 hours from right now. So 8 p.m. tomorrow night, which is a Tuesday, May the 21st. So thanks so much for watching. And I see so many people have jumped on. It's so good to see you all. And I hope you all have an amazing Monday. And I'll see you tomorrow on The Drive at Five. Bye.